yeah, everything looks good and uh, the process shouldn't take too long, like the bolting on stuff. So it took me a couple of days to get the brakes done and uh, the hardest part of it was the bleeding process for sure. The actual physical installation of the components was pretty easy and I mean anybody can do it. There's nothing special about it. One thing you have to keep in mind when you're installing the stainless steel lines, the stock, one of those nuts that connect the hard line of the car to the flex line of the brake hose or tube, well that knot needs a specific wrench. In fact, anything you do with the brakes it needs a specific set of wrenches. In this case, it's a 10 millimeter, I'm not sure what it's called, brake, brake line wrench or something like that. And it's also a little bit tighter so that there's no play. Otherwise, you can actually strip the nut and at that point, you're pretty screwed. It's actually easier if you use a vice grip and hold the top section with the, you know, the rubber hoses and hold that section while you're un loosening the nut itself. So that helps a lot with the whole thing. And uh, the things to keep in mind when you install any kind of brakes is uh, number one, to clean your factory hub. So like, let's say there's some kind of rusting or any kind of residue, you wanna clean it up either with like a Scotch-Brite or a wire brush or something like anything that will scrape off whatever's there. So you wanna make sure that the surface is super flat. And this applies to anything you do actually. So be it new wheels or spacers or anything like that, you want the hub to be as smooth as possible. So once I got the brakes on, I had to figure out how to bleed the system and there's so much information on YouTube and you know online in general. And it's just like, it's easy to get lost in the process. You know, a lot of people will say like, it's super important which corner you bleed first. But what I found out was um, that's not the most important bit. The most important bit is to make sure basically the whole th uh, system is flushed first. So, and another thing is if you, let's say let your fluid run too low and your master cylinder becomes dry well there's a way out of it you just got to flush it with a lot of fluid and just make sure you buy a bunch of bottles I bought these three huge bottles the cheap fluid that I got on AutoZone dot four but you can do dot three if you're not planning on racing or anything uh, the boiling point is just fine for daily driving but yeah the trick is to just uh, fill it up and just flush it out as much as you can uh, just open up one valve in the caliper completely, hook up a hose to it. I used one of those bottles, they're all-star bleeder bottle. Basically what it means is the fluid will come into the bottle, but it's not going to let the air back out. And you can make one of those bottles yourself easily. I just didn't want to bother with it, so it was like, I think 30 bucks or something on Amazon. First, you want to flush everything out with fluid, so to make sure that the fluid comes out where there's no bubbles. And the second part that I did was I did it the old school method, like my second round. So basically pump the pedal five times or so and then hold it. And then what I used was uh, my jack has two bars. 
in one of the bars I could actually wedge in between the pedal and the seat that helped a lot it basically eliminates the need for another person so I did that then I would come out to the caliper open the valve watch whatever air come out of it you know then close it and get back in pump it again so I did it like three times per corner and then I repeated the process just to make sure it's super thorough you don't want any air in the system because uh, basically the reason for that is air compresses and fluid does not so you don't want any compression in the system so when your master cylinder starts squeezing the fluid into the lines it's creating pressure which then acts upon your pistons in your calipers right so if you have any air so that primarily results in the sponginess of the pedal especially with new calipers that have nothing inside of them so you want to make sure you flush them out super well and with big brakes just uh, remember there's two valves per side and the most important thing to keep in mind in this case is the reservoir itself you always want to keep a, your eye on that so you never want to let it go below minimum I actually made sure that it never goes below middle the pedal feel now is uh, better than the stock one no doubt about it I mean my stock pedal had some sponginess to it and I always hated that but I didn't know how to bleed brakes so you know I just kind of dealt with it but now it's like the second you step on a pedal there's you feel that there's some braking and uh, there's no like dead zone nothing like that so just don't waste your money on like super expensive stuff like Motul and stuff I actually bought two bottles of expensive Motul and I ran right through them when I was flushing the system and that was kind of a bummer so I ended up just buying Prestone fluid at the AutoZone basically the, the other important thing is to have a brake cleaner spray and that's like three bucks at AutoZone super super helpful like if you spill any fluid you just spray it and it's just easy to clean now that's pretty much it I'm trying to think of all the things to keep in mind when you do this but it's really no rocket science here I mean so my brakes came with these instructions basically everything you need to know how to install them how to bleed the system and stuff so yeah pretty much everything you need to know here and it even says if you don't have an assistant use one of these bars but you can use any bar you can use a piece of wood even just slide your seat close to the pedal you know until it presses in that's pretty much it just make sure you don't like, damage your seat and stuff and the final part is of course the bedding in pads to rotors and super important yeah that's pretty much it I guess I'll update the video when I break them in and just you know see how it feels got done bedding him in and took about 30 minutes or so just a bunch of stops as recommended you know and so far so good I'll, I really like the feel of them it's just not as uh, not as strong of a bite as I expected it's more of a more gradual feel like the stock ones but stronger if that makes sense I'm thinking that they're not fully broken in yet like you have to actually spend time with them you know wear them out a little bit then it becomes better now I can always change the pads it's all about the pad that cold bite so I'm not worried about that and like I said I'm not gonna abuse them like I'm not gonna take it to the track or anything I just want to daily drive at occasional Canyon runs you know so the finish on these is actually pearl orange and I didn't expect that that's really awesome so when the Sun hits them they glow super bright so I was having a hard time choosing the colors because they have like the matte black they have the yellow they have this orange they have the red and I think that's it actually too bad they don't have like something acid green or you know lime green that would be awesome I think I would actually go for that in, instead of orange but orange is my favorite color so i um, really happy with the choice I just I always like acid green or lime green whatever you want to call it I think it's one and the same but I could be wrong so during the bleeding process I did chip the caliper a little bit so you want to be mindful of that if you get these calipers just make sure you're really really careful plus I was using these cheap wrenches Duralast from AutoZone I actually went and um, got Huskies at Home Depot later, much better. I'm not sure where the company is actually located, but they build them in Taiwan. So, and they ship them from there too. I mean, I got them less than, in less than a week, airmail. So, it's about 75 bucks for shipping. So, in total, it's like 14.75 that I paid. They had some kind of sale going on on Christmas, during the Christmas holidays and New Year's. 
normal price is about 19.50 or something like that uh, and they have the 13 inch and the 14 inch rotor this is 14 but with these you get stainless steel lines uh, definitely want some you know you want to upgrade to those when you do something like this I don't know I just didn't like the OEM brakes at all like maybe it was just the fluid that needed to be uh, bled but it's just uh, the feel of it didn't really inspire much confidence you know like just even daily driving the pedal sometimes would just sag a little bit sometimes it would be stronger and sometimes weaker it's like it's weird so um, I can only say that it's because of some air in the system but it could be other factors you know who knows and of course they come with the pads and everything so uh, pretty much the whole kit ready to go plug and play so I also installed a set of new headlights because one of them got damaged in an accident so ended up just I've had these for a while I just I was too lazy to install them before but pretty much the same thing as I had before except this time I the sea lights I actually didn't paint them so you can see the light shining through them finally I mean personally I like these more but some people say the previous set of headlights look better like the sea light that I painted uh, to match the side gun metal part yeah that's pretty much it guys I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, just hit me up if you have questions about the brakes I don't know if I mentioned everything probably forgot a couple things but uh, yeah just let me know I'll see you in the next video